Fact, more people have climbed Everest than rode the Atlantic Ocean. First crossing, 1896. Two Norwegian fishermen, New York to the Scilly Isles, in that boat, 1896. They did it partly because they were bored. How bored do you have to be? Most crossing these days take place from the Canary Islands, the West Indies, partly because the winds work for you, the waves work for you, partly because it's the safest route, clearly, there is to cross the Atlantic. That is, your standard ocean going rowing boat, 28 feet long, that'll take between two and six people, big cabin in there for sleeping, eating, technology, rowing space, cabin for other sorts of shit I don't really understand, but it helps you get across, apparently. This is where you sleep, this is where you live. It's not comfortable, it's very basic. Stores for food, you take all your own food with you. Other stores for loo rolls, safety equipment, lots of technical stuff there. It's not glamorous, okay? All it is, this is the outside of a rowing boat. You can see here, pretty much the same. More storage, we'll come on to that in a second. There's your cabin, it's just you and the oars and the ocean and storage. That is pretty much all there is to it. And also in that corner there, a water maker. You get electronics, you get a kit, you get lots of porn kit. This is the most important kit to take with this is the bucket. Because on these boats, you bucket and chuck it, all right? If there's no bucket, you go over the side. If the wind's not in your favour, you get into all sorts of trouble, okay? These things are not coming out of. Should we try and get out of a boat a few years ago? That's in a harbour. Trying to get out of a boat in a Force 4, it's not an easy thing to do. These things are not built for love or comfort or desire. These things are built to get across an ocean as safe as possible. That is an ocean going rowing boat. You are on your own probably four days from the nearest person who can possibly help you out and rescue you. It's just you, 3,000 miles of ocean, and probably between nine and ten weeks of sheer misery to get across the ocean. Why the hell do you start it? I started it because when I was seven, I looked like this. Unbelievable, but true. And I got bullied to hell. I would have, frankly, I would have bullied me. I look a right twat, didn't I, there? Frankly, I would have bullied me. That's where it really got me. I went off to prove myself I was being bullied so much. You might think, Rob, Love to see, live on the coast. I don't. I live here, Leicester. Leicester is officially closer to space than it is to the coast. That's how far away I am from the sea. I could live anywhere, but no, I live there. Well, this is how I got into it. Could you're in ocean with this man. This is the man here. He lost his rowing partner. I saw that in the paper. I thought, yes, I can. As it turns out, no, I couldn't. I didn't know that. I gave it a best shot. Three weeks in, it was clear. One of us was going to die, possibly kill each other. So I got off, he carried on. Ocean rowing is fundamentally dull, mostly because all you can see when you're out there is this. Nine, ten weeks of this. Sometimes it's dark. You don't even get to see that. You see sharks and flying fish and stuff. Most of all, you see sky. Sometimes you see a boat. Don't get too close to the boat. It will kill you, all right? Boats are dangerous, yeah? Stay away from the boat. It's my advice to you here in ocean rowing because you get too close. They won't see you. You're too small for them to see you. So it's down to you. Stay away from the boat. Make yourself big as you possibly can. Ocean rowing is hard. Your hands will become claws. You're rowing so much for nine, ten weeks, you're rowing two hours on, two hours off, you will get blisters on your hands. It will hurt a lot. Ocean rowing is also hard on your feet. He's hoping the slide will come up very, very quickly because you've got to steer with your feet. Sometimes you'll be steering naked. You've got to steer with your feet. It's very hard on your feet. You will get blisters. Most of all, though, ocean rowing is spectacularly hard. And I'm sorry about this next slide, but it is really important. Ocean rowing is very, 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 very hard on your bottom. This was taken nine weeks after my mate finished his crossing. Yeah, that's, by the way, is not growth. That's to hide his dignity, in case you're wondering. Yeah. You imagine, look at the craters on that. How much pain must he have been in during his nine weeks of crossing? Crossing didn't work out the next time, I'm going to pedal it. Not in one of these, but it wasn't a bad idea. It might have been a lot more fun than what I did it in. I will take a spawn that the next time. That's all good. As it turns out, unfortunately, by that point, I was also doing stand-up comedy. And it turns out that stand-up comedy and ocean rowing and pedaling don't mix. This He can went as far as to buy a boat. Got a very nice, comfortable chair there, as you can see. That's the most comfortable bit of the whole boat. Up here, you've got more storage, water maker in there, as I say. But other than that, still didn't work out, mainly because... I broke down, had a nervous breakdown. Then two years after that, I thought, you know what? I'm gonna give this up. And then, that and the gentleman, what happens when you break a hip at the age of 48? And you think at that point, your life is over. Basically, you are screwed. I couldn't cycle. I wasn't allowed to run anymore. And I was so fed up. 
I thought, I'm going to do this one more go, which is why I have signed up to do the Atlantic Crossing in 2017 from Gomera to Antigua. We'll see how that goes. Thanks a lot, guys. Good night. <laughs>